And I always knew that there was a reason that I clap before every podcast episode, um, but just recently found out that that's what people actually do when they're um, syncing up their audio and their video. So, you know, just seeing that clap is, a, is an easy way to kind of see the spike um, in the you know, on the sound chart. So it's easy to match up that spike and the clap in the audio with the spike in the video. So today's the first time uh, really attempting to dive in on uh, on a podcast here while I'm doing the video and I'm doing it at lunch. So I uh, ran a little bit short this morning as far as my time uh, available, like after doing my morning pages, after taking the dogs for a walk and uh, you know, just kind of doing all the basic stuff that I've got to do in the morning. So either way, I think uh, this I've got a much better idea for like what I want to accomplish with the podcast, what I need, you know, how I need to do it as far as like with the planning and, you know, just kind of following through on the plans and not being afraid to, you know, invest that time and effort into doing something. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing that I've kind of realized over the last couple of years is that, you know, even if you're spending a lot of time doing something and you might might not get all the likes that you wanted or get it shared or just get the recognition that you want, that doesn't mean that people aren't paying attention. And that doesn't mean that it makes your mission any less important. Um, I think the most important thing is just to keep doing, you know, most people are not really too worried about like, uh, they're not too worried about like trying to show you how much they care or like every single post, you know, people are, everyone's getting a little bit lazier. And it's like, you know, if you liked every single thing that you looked at and you truly liked, then, um, then, you know, it, it's just that extra, extra added second. And, you know, it's simple things like that, that kind of, you know, can reduce conversions and yada, yada, yada. But then on the flip side of that, you also have to realize like, maybe it just means I suck. <laughs> maybe, uh, my, co- my content isn't, eliciting enough, enough of a, uh, an emotional response. And so that's something that, you know, you've always got to keep in mind and, and tweak as you go, but until people see consistency, consistency, they're not going to give a fuck. So keep doing it, keep pumping it out every single day, whether it's, um, at a certain time or, you know, that you've scheduled or just whenever you can make that time. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of a mix of both, but my goal over the next couple weeks is to really, get myself ahead of where I need to be for the season so that I can really help other people with their gardens. So, you know, I have a shit ton of content just from the past, you know, four or five garden seasons or whatever it's been that I've um, been growing now. I think it's five. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, this is going to be our fourth garden this year at uh, in the Garden for Gain South. And, uh, and I, I'm still like undecided on what I'm going to do for uh, for the garden up at my parents' house. I think, I think that I'm just going to be nice and (laughs) not let that one go, uh, turn into another weed patch like it did last year. Um, just cause it is, you know, it's half an hour away. I'm not, I don't have the time to get up there every day or multiple times throughout the week. And, you know, and that's an excuse, but at the same time, you know, what I'll probably end up doing with that area is really converting that into, something that my parents will use or enjoy. So my mom really likes lavender and I had really good success with growing lavender from seed last year. So that's probably what I'm going to do this year is, you know, get a nice big fat tray of lavender out there. Um, and it's going to be amazing once everything flowers, just cause it's going to be nice, big purple bushes, you know, just rows of nice, huge purple bushes. So, um, you know, I'm pumped for that and, uh, hopefully my mom will still let me do that for her, but we'll see what happens. And, um, and really, you know, that's today's podcast. I, I wasn't really sure what exactly I'd be doing, but I did want to sp- kind of springboard off of, uh, my most recent, um, most recent episode. Actually, I'm going to keep all these seeds in here, but yesterday I, sorry for the noise. <laughs> yesterday I, uh, put out a a podcast as well as a blog um, talking about seeds, soil, and supplies. So really went into like more of the seed trays, some propagation methods, um, and really like my favorite products as far as like seed starting trays, hydroponics uh, seed starting trays, and then, you know, just some of the other uh, supplies that make it really easy to grow, you know, things, you know, all vegetables, but especially like that hydro float, um, the floating floating tray with, um, 
It's a styrofoam tray that floats, and then it's got little uh, peat grow plugs that actually goes inside of each one of the 55 cells. So that's by far the easiest way to grow tomatoes, peppers, almost any vegetable or fruit um, that you're going to be growing in your garden. You know, even even like herbs and stuff like that. But um, super easy. So I like went over that, talked about some of the fertilizers that that we really recommend. And, um, and then, so, you know, off of that also, I started talking about like the different seed companies that I, that I work with. So, um, Gurney's was number one on there. Burpees obviously is on there. And then, uh, Johnny's seeds. And those are really like my top three for now. And there's a ton of seed suppliers out there and I'm always like kind of testing out new, new ones just to see like what else is out there and what other what, what I'm missing out on as far as like local suppliers or, you know, sometimes you, you find like those small companies that really like go above and beyond and like, wow, you, you know, beyond your wildest imaginations, you know, whatever that can be for seed. But, but, um, so I just wanted to kind of dive in. Kyla had gotten me this big bat or this big envelope of seeds from gurneys. Um, so I just wanted to dive in on this because it's like kind of like a, a mystery pack of seeds. What are you doing over there, Basil? You play in? <laughs> Dogs have been going crazy. They have so much more energy ever since, you know, I started walking them in the morning. And, you know, it's just so nice to see that they're like happy and just, I don't know, just like how a dog should be. And it's not like they weren't before, but, but it's so good. You know, you know how it is when you exercise, you just feel like a million bucks. Um, and so I think that they're probably feeling that a little bit too. So trying to get Twiggy a little bit trimmer and just burn basil's you know excessive energy off but but i wanted to dive in on the seeds here real quick uh got a little bit of time today but kyla surprised me with all of these seeds so i want to kind of go through these and just talk about you know it, it follows with most of what i'm having to do as far as like altering my diet and and you know finding the varieties that are more suited for my diet but also more suited for like what people actually want not what I want to grow and what I want to test out. So it's going to be a little bit more intentional this year. So, you know, a lot of things like root crops and stuff like that. If you hear like a bouncing ball, uh, the dogs love racquetballs. That's like the best dog toy. Um, they hardly ever break uh, unless Twiggy gets a hold of it. She likes to like pop the fuck out of them, but <laughs> Basil's pretty good with it. But anyway, so kind of going down this list here. Um, first one I pulled out of the package was a carrot and the variety is called yaya hybrid so from what i've heard with that that variety of carrot is you know it's not super long it's maybe seven to twelve inches long that's what she said and <laughs> and it's super sweet um so that's what we want you know there's you know, when you think about carrots, you're like, why would you grow a carrot? But until you've had, a, when you pull the carrot out of the ground and you smell that fresh, um, that fresh scent, that fresh flavor is unbelievable. And like carrot straight out of the garden, there's nothing better, nothing sweeter. And, you know, especially like what it does to stews and soups and all that. Um, another thing is like really controlling the herbs that we grow this year and making sure that we have a constant succession of plantings for those and not over planting in the spring. So typically what my problem is, is I'll start off in the spring, I'll plant 72, you know, of uh, cilantro that we've got here. And then I just forget to keep planting. So that should be one that you go, you know, every maybe two to four weeks, you're replanting it. Basil's like flirting with Twiggy. It's so funny. Um, but kind of moving down the list so we can get this done before I got to head back. Uh, another thing, it, or next one up, sweet pepper. This is called Yum Yum Hybrid Mini Bells. Bell peppers are something that I can't eat a ton of, but it's a, it's a huge favorite, and it's something that I've gotten better at growing over the years. So I'm really good with hot peppers. Not so much with sweet peppers, so I really want to dial that in this year. On to the greens. Uh, this is one of our favorites, Butter Crunch Lettuce. A nice sweet lettuce um, it doesn't have too much of like a grassy flavor or whatever and it does like it almost has like a creamy kind of texture like butter crunch it truly is smooth and crunchy so it's got that nice um, combination of like flavors and textures and just really just perfect for for the garden basil did you need to go outside come on 
Sorry for the squeak. So anyways, this is our lunch break. It's in and out, in and out. We gotta play inside, we gotta play outside. <laughs> gotta get our sun, but that's the way it is, so. Uh, looks like the next few we've got popping up here are all tomatoes. So I'm just gonna run through these real quick. Typically in the past, um, we've stuck to some traditional ones, and so I'll start with those. San Marzano, that's a great tomato variety. Probably one of the best for sauce, um, tomato sauces, making homemade chilies, even salsas and pico, perfect. Um, and it's really like a, it's a an indeterminate, so it grows taller, but it's it's a true hybrid to where, <clears throat> to where it actually does like grow, kind of like a determinate, kind of like an indeterminate. So you'll actually have some like branches that will end up turning into leaders, you know, in, unless you cut them or um, just prune them out, I guess. So, so it's a really funky one. You gotta keep an eye on it and just really watch for those rogue strands. Next one up is hybrid jelly beans. This thing throws off, you know, probably 25 to 40 flowers per cluster and just these nice little jelly bean sized tomatoes that's, um, I think we actually use some of them for tomato sauce. So they're versatile, uh, it might, get, might be a little sweet for tomato sauce, but it was amazing. Speaking of sauce, next one up is Easy Sauce Hybrid. I would imagine that's gonna be, you know, kind of like an early girl, maybe mixed with aroma. So it's gonna be a nice round one, a nice round tomato, but have, you know, you know, very meaty and, you know, not so watery like some of the other tomatoes. Um, next up is Chocolate Cherry Tomato. So those kind of have like a brownish, dark red striping on them. Um, and I think, I don't think those are heirloom variety, but, but it's an interesting one and another one that's really super sweet. Uh, last tomato blend is an heirloom rainbow blend, and I'm super pumped about that because heirlooms are something that a lot of people really want, but not a lot of people can grow it. So if I can pull it off and uh, provide my customers with something you know way out of the realm of normalcy, I think that'll be a huge asset for us for this garden season. One second while I let this little beast in. Come on. Good girl. That's a good girl. You want to be a podcast buddy again? Yeah, hi. <laughs> She's starved for attention if you can't tell. You love your pops? Did you poop? Did you poop? <laughs> All right, sorry. So on to the next... Um, We've got a few more little packets of seeds here, and I think a lot of these are the vining varieties. So this is an interesting one, not necessarily one that I wanted to grow, but I think Kylo was super intrigued by it, and, and it, it's definitely an Instagram plant, and this is the Armenian cu Cucumber. So these things are, are like three feet long and kind of vulgar looking, but, but it's very cool. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting to grow something that's like, way out of the ordinary and, and even if it's just one or a couple plants it's not going to take up a ton of space so we can add a little bit of t you know space and time for testing new stuff like that and speaking of new stuff that's another one that i know i've got in here that i wanted to throw out uh with that and that is the lufa gourd so lufa gourd is not something that you eat it basically grows and looks like a cucumber but you let it sit on the vine and then from there, um, you actually let it dry out on the vine. After about, I think, 120 days, then you're going to go back, harvest it if it's dried up enough. Take that cucumber, beat it against the ground or against a post or whatever, get all the seeds out of it. Save those seeds if you want to grow them next year. And, and then from there, then you start peeling off the skin. And then underneath that skin is a loofah, just pretty much like a sponge. Um, and then you can take that sponge and cut it up into different sections. Twiggy, get out of there. You can cut that sponge up into a couple different sections. And then, um, you know, I think they're good to use for like every two to four weeks, you might want to replace it or something, but you know, really cool thing to add to the garden. And I'm hoping that we can, um, 
get, you know, have enough time to actually grow it to harvest. So that's the one thing I know that it does take a long time to harvest and it's just a very long season. So fingers crossed on that one. We'll definitely get, probably just get it started indoors in a cow pot, get it nice little head start, plop it in the ground and let it go for the summer. Um, so next up here, um, we've got some more vining ones, but before we get to that, the last sweet pepper, which is called a habanada. So the habanada is actually a habanero that's supposed to not have heat. I highly doubt that it, <laughs> that's going to be a hundred percent the case, but, um, but you know, if, if that is true, then hopefully it is, uh, so that I can get some habanero flavors without, you know, having to suffer from the consequences. So last few things we've got here. We've got two more varieties here, and these are both vining plants. So the first one up is a summer squash called Smooth Criminal Hybrid. So this is an interesting one um, because it says that it's an indeterminate, has an indeterminate growth habit. So it's going to continue to grow taller and produce fruit at the top of that vine. So to me, that seems like a huge opportunity because that means we can trellis it just like tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, eggplants, peppers. So we're going to do that. And, um, and then that keeps it from really sprawling out and taking up a lot of square footage, get everything going vertical and, uh, you know, just really capitalize on whatever, whatever we can do to maintain as much square footage as possible. Vertical growing goes along with the next, uh, these next seeds as well. This is a, a cantaloupe or it's a French melon called Petit Gris de Ren. And so this is a French melon, I think similar to like a cantaloupe. So again, I'm gonna try the same thing with that, get them grown vertically and um, you know, use tomato clips or plant tie tape or whatever I need to do to secure it to a stake or trellising method. So last but not least, uh, we'll go with the last trellising pro uh, plant and that's the snap peas and the variety is called Magnolia Blossom. So I think those are the ones we grew last year, had a pretty good yield. And as long as you keep pulling them and keep them supported, keep them growing up, keep the temperature at a nice cool level, you're guaranteed to, you know, have a solid, you know, solid two to six week harvest maybe. And then the very last one is one of my favorite beans that Kyla introduced to me a couple years ago. Yeah, I think two years ago was the first year we grew it, and that's a bush bean called the Hulk. So obviously they call this thing the Hulk because they're huge beans. They grow like nine to 12 inches. It says seven to nine inches long, but I know we had some that were over a foot last year. And they have really good flavor, no matter what the size is. Perfect for, um, perfect for stir fries or just eating plain green beans. So, you know, <laughs> I really love them. And this has been, you know, this is a really good selection of seeds. Kyla did an awesome job. Really the, oh, I just threw out a spit bubble, <laughs> but really the only thing that I'm missing at this point would be, um, you know, potentially a couple more sweet, you know, maybe one more variety of sweet peppers, some, uh, some more of the bulbs. So maybe some turnips, I don't know about beets. And then, just the other big, really big ones would be potatoes, onions, and garlic. And so those things will be planted out, you know, later in the spring anyways, and we'll just do direct sowing of all of those bulbs. But as far as seeds go, we're pretty, pretty solidly set. And all of these seeds are from gurneys. Um, I'm not sure if any of these are new varieties, but if there are, I will, uh, I'll be putting that out in a blog post here coming up and just kind of detail, you know, all of these plants in that blog post as well. So hopefully we'll get that triple th threat go going with the podcast, video, and blog. Um, and that's my goal this year is just to do it as much as possible in order to make your gardening season the most successful it's ever been. Or if you're just getting started, really help get you off the ground and, and get things rolling. Because I know how daunting of a task it seems to be. And, you know, just following through very simple steps of finding your supplies, finding your seeds and taking it one day at a time is really the best thing you can do. So I'll be doing all the work for you. So if you got specific questions or plants you're looking to grow, drop me a comment or feel free to call into the station if you're listening on the podcast. But thanks for listening in. And as always, I appreciate it.